Hello, everyone. Welcome to Talk Talks Podcast. I am your host, Andrew Kistner, for the Oxford Center Talks. And uh, we took the summer off, and uh, we had vacations, all kinds of fun stuff going on, and we're getting back at it for fall. And you'll notice I'm sitting in this side, so you probably diehard listeners will know why I'm sitting over here. It's because we're interviewing today Dr. Alicia Heisey, uh, Doctor of Physical Therapy. And uh, we are going to talk about concussions, as Alicia... Um, can't just do things normal. She's always got to go forward. She's got to go up. And she created a concussion program for the Oxford Center, and which we are rolling out um, and hopefully adding to and uh, with other providers and, and different things. Uh, but we've got a great base, um, a fantastic program thus far that will only improve over time. And we wanted to kind of sit down with her and talk a little bit about uh, her side of things from concussion. I'll probably interview some others uh, for the other therapies and therapeutics that you know we utilize to help concussions uh, but we'll kind of dive into the physical ser- therapy side of things and uh, see where that lands so welcome to Thank the podcast you. it's good to be back yes it is I I missed not recording podcasts yeah. uh, but it was good to have kind of a summer off um, lots goes on so um, I enjoyed the the small break that we that we got summers <clears throat> always go too fast they do go too fast mm-hmm. um, it's starting to get cool I love fall though I'm a huge fall fan. I am a summer girl through and through. Yep. Fall is the start to the decline of the seasons. So (laughs) (laughs) decline. See, I love the cool weather, but I love, I mean, I love winter. Um, I like in the winter we will have, I know this has nothing to do with a concussion, but it is what it is. Um, Like we have a window right behind our head and I, I will have that open and the bathroom window. So like it'll get down to like the forties in our room at night and it is great. That makes it impossible to get out of bed in the morning. It does. The, the struggle mm-hmm. is real. Yep. For sure. <laughs> All right. So uh, since we're talking about concussions, um, I know what, I mean, I've had a concussion. I know what a concussion is, but kind of get in depth to really what a concussion is. So concussion in and of itself is um, such a vague term. It is. Uh, I agree. And it's not used properly. No. Um, So a concussion is a mild traumatic brain injury. They are one in the same. So all of these people that just say, oh, it's just a concussion. Oh, I just hit my head a little. (laughs) No, no, it is so much more than that. Um, You are physically disrupting your brain. Um, And so this idea of all of these concussions, I think, Overall, there's four million concussions a year right. that are documented, and they believe that another that's only 50% of those because so many concussions go undiagnosed. Right. Um, the symptoms for concussions are varied from person to person, okay. um, and they can last days, they can last months, or they can last years, depending on how you present, your your how you are beforehand, how you respond afterwards. There's such a complexity to what a concussion is. Right. Um, it's, because they vary, mm-hmm. it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, obviously the worse the concussion, the worse the symptoms, I assume, or is that not accurate? Um, it, no. Because um, no, I've had concussions that mm-hmm. I just felt bad, and I've had concussions that I could not, I lost vision. Yes. Uh, for, man, eight hours so, after that concussion. And so there's, so in a concussion, so there's direct or indirect concussions. So a direct concussion is wham, you got a blow to the head directly. Yep. Or you can even get a concussion from things such as whiplash, falling, falling down oh and just jolting your body enough so that force travels through your body and shakes your brain enough to disrupt the axons in the brain. Um, so you can have direct or indirect concussions. And so, so many people are like, oh, I didn't hit my head. I can't have a concussion. Nope, that's not true either. Um, I, that yeah. blows my mind. I never would have thought that. Yeah, so, you know, there's there's so many that go undiagnosed, and then for weeks or months afterwards, you have all of these lingering symptoms, and you're, right. you don't understand why you have this brain fog, why you have this headache, why you're tired, why you're a little bit more emotionally dysregulated, or, you know, you're crying at things you didn't used to, or you're having trouble reading the paper or looking at your computer screens. But you're like, I didn't hit my head. So... Right. Can't no. be that. It, yes, it could be. <laughs> yes, it could be. Right. Um, and so there's there's such a complexity to how you can even get a concussion. So, no, it doesn't really matter how hard you hit your head because sometimes you don't even have to hit your head to get a concussion. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was the first concussion I had. 
Um, I was in kindergarten, and I was in the bathroom line, you know, you lined up. I assume they still do that. Um, and I fell. I think I tripped over a kid, and then the kid behind me tripped over me and just drilled my head into the concrete. Um, and, yeah, I went blind. Mm -hmm. um, I, I could see light and whatnot. Um, I could get around. I could see figures, but, like, there was a definite problem. Um, and it was interesting. I mean, I told the teacher. The teacher did nothing about it. Um, and I went all through school, um, you know, with a concussion. And this is probably early afternoon um, until my mom picked me up and I said, hey, I can't see. And then she was a very wanting to know some answers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she took me to the hospital and they said, yeah, yeah it's a concussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that that is one of those, you know, 50% go undiagnosed. And it's right. so often, you know, kids fall, they hit their head, all of these things. But understanding what is happening inside that brain and the severity of it. Because if you take a kiddo that has a concussion and you further stress that brain, right. you're pushing them farther and farther into those concussion symptoms. And we'll get into a little bit of what is like a primary and secondary forms of phases of the concussion and why that's so important. For sure. Um, but those kiddos, you know, that fall on the playground or that hit their head in gym class and it's not reported to parents or nothing is done about it, they're then forced to continue through all of their schoolwork with a brain that is struggling so hard to just function at a basic level. Um, so you're getting pushed farther and farther into those concussion right. symptoms, making it worse and worse. It's harder to recover. Your, your longevity of that concussion continues to increase. And it's all because for so often we are not taking head injuries as seriously as we need to. Absolutely. And I feel if no one tells mom or dad, mm -hmm then that kid can go for a very long time. Correct. You know, while that concussion is healing. Yeah. Completely undiagnosed. Mm -hmm. um, or even worse than a concussion, you know, you, it could go up to the moderate or the, the right. higher levels of brain injury. Um, and if no one ever tells that parent, you know, they could be vomiting, which is one of the big symptoms, or mm -hmm. like the loss of vision, some of those bigger symptoms, and that parent's not going to know what it's related to. Right. Kids get sick. Sure. So, oh, maybe he has the flu tonight. Right. Now you've waited too long to start getting getting this, the help you need into that, that brain injury. Right. Um, so it, it is so important to take yeah. these head injuries seriously. Yeah, and uh, it, it kind of boggles my mind to the fact that there could be kids out there that, you know, parents are, does my kid have a learning disability? Why is my, you know, mm -hmm. all these different things that can come up. And yet it was actually just a concussion, maybe even a, a hefty concussion, a moderate mm -hmm. or whatever, that they didn't know about. Right. And now they're trying to get their kids diagnosed for learning disabilities because they have brain fog, mm -hmm. you know, and they can't remember things uh, and it can be solved. So um, walk me through kind of the stages of, we know what a concussion is, obviously it's the brain hitting the inside of the skull. Um, walk me through kind of the different phases of how bad, no big deal to we have a big situation on our hands. Sure. <clears throat> so. The brain in and of itself is made up of millions and millions of neurons, and these neurons function based off of membrane potentials. So on the outside, you have your sodium, and on the inside, you have your potassium. Okay. This creates and it is forced into a negative membrane potential using the ATP pump and glucose. So your cells are working really hard in your brain all day long to make sure that they keep that, n that negative charge. Okay. The negative charge is very important because the the sole purpose of neurons is to transmit signals between each other right. and down through their axons. That's how we interpret our world. That's how we engage with our world. That's how we come up with speech. That's how we come up with our movement patterns. Everything starts in the brain from the input to the output. Everything is the brain right. and it's all of these neurons firing, firing, firing. Um, they have to do so very efficiently, very quickly in numerous different directions and it's all based off of these membrane potentials. So these cells work really hard all day long to keep that negative charge on the inside. So then when a potential happens, so light into your eyes or sound, um, it triggers this action potential. So then this influx of sodium into the cell creates a nice little positive charge. It sends the signal down and releases neurotransmitters. So these neurotransmitters then go from one to the next until you get the output. So the movement or the understanding or the interpretation of whatever that input was into an output status. So that's how the brain functions primarily is all off of these And that all ions. happens in mm -hmm. milliseconds, yes. if not quicker. Yes, all day long with every little movement we make, so cool. our breathing, our heart rate, all of these action right. potentials all day long, all the way through the brain. 
And then different areas of the brain do different functions, like you lost your vision, so you know, a good chance that you probably hit the back of your head at some point, because right. that's where a lot of our vision centers are. Um, but all of these action potentials, all day for everything. It's, right. The brain is constantly going, constantly going. It uses so much energy, but it keeps a very tight balance mm -hmm. in all of its ions, all of its neurons, to make sure that things are functioning the best it can. Right. So now you take this brain that is functioning at its optimum, and you smack it. You get right. a blow to it, or even your body, which jolts your brain enough. So it's an acceleration, deceleration force, or rotational force of the brain, which causes all of those axons to kind of, whoa. Um, so it's called the diffuse axonal injury of the brain. Fine. So there's, yeah, so it's, it's a widespread, um, you can have a coop counter coop, which is the front and the back of the, the head if you do truly which hit is, your I head. I think it's what I had. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but those action potentials now are all disrupted. And so the primary phase is that head blow. It's that injury to the head or injury to the body that creates the physical change in the brain. And then you get into your secondary phase. And your secondary phase is where most of your disruptions happen. So there is a nice phrase, um, which is a metabolic crisis. Okay. So your brain actually goes into this metabolic crisis stage. So your sodium ions and your potassium ions, they're all, all over the place. Your action potentials aren't nearly as strong, and your brain is struggling because now this beautiful ion center is everywhere. Right. So it doesn't have the action potential, doesn't have the membrane potentials to create the action potentials. So now all of all of these signals are slowed, they're muddled, they can't get where they need to go, um, and so it stresses the brain out. So the brain then works overdrive, sending all of this energy to the brain to try and fix this because we need we need those cells with a negative right. charge and so the brain is working on overdrive trying to just get to these ions where they need to be so that way it can function better in the pattern of overdrive you've also disrupted your blood flow so you can't get enough energy into your brain to now create this beautiful Makes stasis sense. Um, and so the brain, like I said, it's just, it's overworked. It's trying really hard to even get those action potentials from one end to the other. That's where a lot of brain fog comes from. Right. So your brain just feels slow right. and it is because you are literally slowing this action potential because you don't have the negative start. And so now your brain is working on overdrive and any little external stressor, schoolwork, right. bright lights, trying to interpret the world around you, loud noises, prolonged headaches, all of these things further exacerbate this metabolic crisis and it becomes cyclical. So now you're in this cyclical stage, you add in, X more, in more stress, which now creates a more disruption to the brain. And then you don't handle stress well, more right. disruption to the brain. Don't handle stress Just well. Just going in a big circle. In a huge and never circle. Mm -hmm. So if it doesn't go diagnosed, you sit in this pattern of just metabolic crisis and you can't get your brain back out of it. Hmm. So it takes very, very finite symptom management and paying attention to those symptoms and having the help of those professionals who can help you figure out which ones are concussion related, which ones are stress related, and working through those as a team in order to help that brain re-regulate. Right. So I think, um, and I kind of want to get into like how we're solving these issues, um, but I think what's interesting kind of as a segue into that is because um, I've had a couple concussions. Grace even had a concussion. She puked right after falling. Um, and the only thing the hospital can do for you, mm -hmm. um, like there's no, there's no treatment at a hospital. They can check if you have a, a brain bleed, right. you know, but in general, they're just go home, don't watch TV, maybe sit in a quiet room, dark room and take it easy. That's mm -hmm. their only treatment at a hospital. Right, they're, which they're because they're trying to keep you out of this metabolic crisis stage. Right. They're so trying... they want to slow everything down mm -hmm. so that your brain can heal. And I get that. Right. So where do you come in? <laughs> so um, going home, sitting in a dark room, avoiding all lights, avoiding all things, needs to be very, very temporary. Interesting. Um, so your normal body functions at an environmental level. So we have lights, we have sounds, right. we have all of these things. If you go into a dark, entirely quiet room for too long, now your body goes, oh, this is my new normal. Ah. I now need, in order to function, no lights, no noise, no stress. So then when you try and come out of that, 
it's where we end up with post-concussion syndrome is now because... <laughs> I didn't even know. I've never heard of this. Um, because now you can't tolerate the world right. because your brain can only tolerate such low stimulus before it gets overwhelmed again. So it's that slow re-entry with the appropriate stress levels to give it the stress it needs to recover right. and sustain life in the real world, right. but without stressing it to the point where you sit in this metabolic cycle, right. metabolic crisis. So you got to kind of break that. Yes. So we got to do it the right way. Yes. Um, so I have worked with patients in the past who their doctor said to go home, sit in a dark room until your headache goes away. We had to work so hard because now she was light sensitive, she was noise sensitive, and she couldn't put together functional thoughts because everything would stress out her brain and send her right into her symptoms again. So even if the concussion healed, mm -hmm. if you don't heal the right way and you sit in a room for two weeks without doing anything, you created another condition. Mm -hmm. um, so even though your concussion's healed, you have something new right. because of that. Yep. So I had never heard that. Yeah. That's interesting. So this post-concussion syndrome happens post-concussion, right. obviously, with the name. Um, so technically, your brain is stable, but now you can't handle handle stressors because your right. brain's thresholds have all lowered so right. far. Um, and you know, there's a lot of different science out there, whether you're still in this metabolic crisis stage, which is why you're stuck in this post-concussion syndrome, right. um, or if it's truly its own, own separate thing. Um, it, but yeah, it's very... It's almost like any other injury, though. It is. If you think about it, yes, if, it's like just if I silent. have, um, if I hurt my knee, or I, let's even if I have a knee replacement or whatever, mm -hmm. and I just then never use my knee, correct. Or if I just go home and sit in bed for two months, correct. and I don't go to PT or to do anything to rehabilitate myself mm -hmm. the right way, I have this. I have now another problem. Correct. Exactly. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. I like that. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So now your brain is what is struggling though right um and our brain is the sole aspect of everything we do right. your knee can we get by without well sure. you know we get a goofy gait we get all these things right. the brain is such a critical piece of uh, right. who we are you right. know it's it's not just you can't see lights you can't have sounds but it is the soul of your personality it's your emotional yeah. regulation it's your ability to navigate the world around you right right so talk to me a little bit about um the concussion program because i know that you have put several different therapies and if you can kind of go through some of those mm -hmm. um, and how they help um, then I kind of want to transition to what you have for the plan for the future. So talk to me about your specific mm -hmm. program mm -hmm. and what that looks like. So concussions as you know we've touched on, touched on a little bit are different for everyone. Right. So it's not a one size fits all type of program. So it really is based off of symptom presentation. Got it. So concussion can present in so many different ways, whether it is the brain fog, headaches, vision challenges, hearing challenges, dizziness. You know, there's so many different symptoms that can come from headaches. Emotional dysregulation is another big one that I see or hear of quite often. Um, memory, yeah. executive functioning, those, those abilities for the brain to function at such a higher level because it's focusing so hard on surviving this metabolic right. crisis. Um, so putting together many different therapies can help hit concussion from all of its different aspects. Everyone has their strongest points um, within that realm of those symptoms and so figuring out which pieces work better for which person. Okay. Um, so speech therapy, we'll start with them. Um, okay. They don't just do speech right. Um, right. and I know we've, we've, we've talked had about a that. podcast previously we've about that several of those, yeah. um, you know they work so hard on that memory that executive functioning that higher level processing of how we interpret the world and how we work through our world how we dictate what information comes in and which ones are important that is speech therapy that is what they do so right. you know they are going to headline kind of that memory executive functioning piece of it can we get you back to functioning at the level that you were beforehand? Can we get some of this brain fog to go away? Can we get some of your um, executive functioning, which is like, right. you know, your sequencing of different events right. and all of that, can we get that smooth and fluid again? Or do you know, do we need to start putting in some compensatory strategies in the meantime to help you get through your day to day? Right, and I've seen some of those tests that they've done, mm -hmm. or not tests or uh, uh, what sort of, I don't know what you call it, but when they have sequencing, mm -hmm. you know, they have all the cards and they're saying, okay, I need you to put sequencing of, you know, getting dressed, or putting on shoes or whatever, getting ready for bed. Uh, and it's very interesting when you watch, you know, people have to work through those things. Mm -hmm. uh, so they could be doing that because of a concussion. Right. Yeah. Oh. So 
you know, it's very easy for us to order how we get out of bed in the morning, like you said, right. or how to brush our teeth. You know, you got to get the water and the toothpaste, and then you got to brush, and then you right. got to spit, and then you get, you know, all of those yeah. steps. Um, after brain injury, whether it is just a concussion or more severe, more severe, um, sometimes those steps don't make sense, or you don't know where to start. So right. you, know, you spend, end up with some of these apraxias and how to make these motor coordination patterns and sequences work. Um, well, if I ever have a bad concussion, I'll know because I am very um, reg like I have a sequence for everything mm -hmm. I do. Like I get ready the exact same way, um, you know, brush my teeth and then you know deodorant. So I, I have a pattern for everything. So if I ever get out of that, well, <laughs> just sit down and talk. So that's speech side. Um, and then the physical therapy side, um, we are going to do a lot of the symptom management, the symptom tracking right. um, related to headaches, related to dizziness, um, these vestibular based things, the movement patterns, the body patterns. Um, we can do a lot with eye movements and how those trigger different parts of the brain. And um, we hear a lot of post-concussions who, you know, they do a lot of this blinking thing because right. their eyes just aren't working together the way they should. Interesting. Um, so we can do a lot of gaze tracking and gaze holding and stabilization and um, it's called the vestibular ocular reflex, reflex integration and, and having those eyes work with the brain again, which right. kind of sounded like your concussion, your eyes and your brain oh, just yeah. weren't connecting again. Sure. Um, so we're going to work a lot on those and then the dizziness pieces, vestibular, if there's any sort of vestibular integration that needs to be done if we're having movement patterns that are making us dizzy, whether it's coming from the neck, if there was any sort of whiplash with it, or um, whether it is the inner ear, the vestibular system, or whether it's more central, right. working through those dizziness patterns and how how we can either solve those or kind of make them lesser. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, because uh, this is what you specialize in. Mm -hmm. Like, you wouldn't go to an ortho guy and have concussion help. You need a neural person like yourself, mm -hmm. right? Yes, um, it, uh, concussions are very sports related. Um, True. So we see a lot of a lot of sports based injuries. However, a concussion in and of itself is a neurological injury. Right. Um, so yes, sports based return to sport is very important and doing it the right way. Because if you return too soon, there's all of this so much research out there about like secondary impact syndrome and the prevalence of a secondary injury once you've had your first injury. Right. Um, so if you go back into sport too soon, which is what we're trying so hard to prevent in sports these days, um, which is why you know you get pulled and all of those other pieces, yep. it's for a reason. Secondary impact syndrome is very, very severe. So if you end up with a secondary concussion before you're truly healed from your first one, so if you're still in that metabolic cascade, your brain just is not functioning at the right levels, you're so much more susceptible to that secondary right. secondary injury, which can be severely detrimental. Right, so you're um, more susceptible because things aren't fixed. And not mm -hmm. only are you more susceptible to another a second injury, that injury will pr give more compound. damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, compound things. Absolutely. So huh. making sure that we return to sport in the right way right. Um, and do so without re-triggering all of those symptoms. Because, you know, if you have headaches and then you start exercising again, you're changing all of your homeostasis within inside of your body, Is your, your brain is also changing. Right. So as you start to pull that glucose and those energy levels elsewhere in your body as you're exercising, is your brain, does your brain have enough in order to function the way it needs to, especially if it's in that crisis stage? Yeah. Um, so if your brain is sucking all of this glucose, trying to keep those ATP cycles and those sodium pumps working, and you start pulling that glucose away, you know, are you triggering headaches? Are you triggering that blurry vision, double vision? Um, change in your memory, all of those pieces, because if so, then you've returned to sport too soon and you're actually at severe risk of re-injury. Right, mm -hmm. interesting. What else is in your program? Um, eventually, we would love to um, bring in the psychology pieces of it. Um, so much of the emotional dysregulation or just the coping with the symptoms of concussion afterwards, right. processing through what that means and how those changes impact everyone will be huge um, as our program continues to develop and progress. Um, that will hopefully be a big one, but neurofeedback. Okay. Um, so here we can do the acute EEGs. The hardest part with concussion is, so because it's this diffuse axonal injury usually, there's no big area of the brain that gets disrupted from right. an uh, uh, imaging standpoint. Right, so an so MRI isn't really gonna MRI show us is what we need. MRI is not gonna show us what we need. Got However, it. our functional acute EEGs here 
can show different areas of the brain that aren't functioning at their optimal levels. Oh, okay. So if we do a cue and we can see, oh, this part of the brain is you know hyper, this part of the brain is hypo, you can exactly see which parts of the brain are struggling the most based off of where that injury was most severe. Right. Um, and then going through our neurofeedback programs, we can actually start to help to regulate that brain um, through uh, all of the fun things that neurofeedback is, which right. I'm sure we've also talked about in past yeah. podcasts. But um, So can we start to regulate that brain in these different aspects, in these different areas, while also bringing in the physical side of it? So you know, if I'm working on vision and vestibular or balance and coordination, and those areas of the brain are hyper, can we use this neurofeedback right. in coordination with physical therapy to really get this brain re-regulated more quickly. Right. Um, so neurofeedback is going to be huge for this program because we can really pinpoint right. exactly where that brain is or isn't functioning at its best level. Um, lastly here, we are so blessed to have our hyperbaric oxygen. Yep. Um, so, you know, inflammation, you know, you have this brain that's <laughs> wigging out. Right. Um, and an internal injury. And an internal yeah. injury. You've disrupted your blood flow. You've disrupted all of all of this calcium, sodium, potassium, all of these things that are flowing everywhere. Um, hyperbarics is crucial for healing in the best way possible. If we can influx as much oxygen and as much blood supply we can into this injury, we can heal much faster and um, at a at a better pace. So using you know right now we have our PT, our speech, our neurofeedback, and our hyperbarics up and running right away as a as a team we can really hit concussion yeah. um, from all aspects so yeah. we can hit it from the healing component of the hyperbarics to can we target which areas of the brain really need the most help into those physical expressions of this concussion in right. our, our therapies on the outside and I know that um, for uh, concussions the Oxford Center will get like we skip a lot of things formalities you know for you know um, other prospective patients that come in and want to do hyperbarics for whatever reason or any other service, you know, we do a full discovery sessions. Mm -hmm. um, but I know for, for a concussion, we will front desk screening, let's get you in. Mm -hmm. And because of how kind of critical it is, it is, time, you know, is of the essence, the mm -hmm. quicker that we can get to it. Absolutely. So we try to make it as easy as possible, you know, for people to get into the program, um, for hyperbarics at least. So what does it kind of look like when somebody, uh, two questions. One, what is somebody looking for? Whether they're looking for it in themselves or in their kids. And I know you've covered lots of different symptoms, but let's say um, you know you've got mom looking at her kid, and what is she looking for to say it's got to be the concussion he had last year or whatever the case. And then the second part of the question is, is then what do they do about it um, as far as getting into your program? Um, so what are we looking for? Um, and that's. That's the hard part. Right. Is it's is it's different for everyone. Um, parents know their kids. Right. Um, you know, are they acting different? Are they having more trouble regulating themselves, especially for those younger kiddos? You know, are they more reactive? Are they having a harder time coping with things that maybe they didn't before? Right. And maybe, you know, they may not be able to say, "Mom, I have brain fog." Yeah. You know, think. Yeah. They may not be able to um, do that. But you can. Sometimes, not right. always, tell in their movements, um, in the way they're looking at you, in the way that they ha may have a delayed reaction to some things. Yeah. So if you ask them a question and it takes them longer than you think it should for them to answer those questions, or it seems like they're zoning off into space a little bit more, or they're having a hard time focusing their eyes, you see a lot of like the, right. the goofy blinking, or they're getting dizzy, their balance, their coordination isn't quite quite as it should have been or was before they hit their head or What about like struggling in school? Struggling in school is a big one, although that has so many, right. it can um, be many different many things, different things um, which is the great part about the QEEGs. It really can help us right. hone in on, you know, is this more of a learning disability or is there different parts of the brain that aren't functioning quite the way they should, or is it truly related to if they had a head injury, right. um, which is a crucial piece of what we can do here is really start to dive into the what's and the how's and the why's um, and then sort through all of those pieces. Um, really it's just trying to get all of these kiddos the help that they need um, when they can get it. Right. And then how do we get it here? How um, do they, so uh, just quick scenario, you know, mom says, hey my kid's having some issues, brain fog, struggling, emotional regulation. Um, do, can you diagnose concussion or can we kind of put the pieces together and then treat the symptoms? Um, so 
technically I cannot diagnose concussion. Okay. Um, but yes, we can put the symptoms together. Um, and say it's most likely a concussion. We can, yes, we can say that, and then we can also get their PCP involved. Okay, perfect. So um, as a physical therapist, we do have direct access. You can come and see us without a script, technically. Yep. Um, we have 30 days. We almost always loop that position in because it is so important to have a full team on board to help support whatever it is that we find. Um, and so we can really take really detailed history, figure out and kind of go through the different components of what is a concussion, you know, what were your risk factors beforehand, what are your symptoms now, and see if, right. it, if all of those pieces match. Um, and then we can get that PCP, or if the primary care is involved in the first place, we can right. uh, really work together as a team to get the help and all of these other s services right. yeah. um, on board. Awesome. So you have that, I like the synergistic approach, which mm -hmm. is kind of how we do things. Yeah. We hit it from every angle that we can hit it. So yes. It works very, very well for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. so. Very much so. Awesome. Yeah. Do you have anything else to add? No, I it's don't pretty think so. It's pretty comprehensive. Yeah, well, right. I hope so. It was, it was a lot. As I was getting ready for it, I was like, this is, how yeah. far into this do I need to go to get everyone to understand the What's complexity way more involved, of... And I think yes. people um, and I don't necessarily know how or why, but concussions have just been kind of um, not put down, but lessened mm -hmm. in the way that how serious they are. Correct. Um, and I think all the way from the top down, you know, mm -hmm. hospitals or doctors, you know, emergency rooms are just, oh, it's a concussion, go home, you know, take it easy for a couple of days and you'll be back on your feet. Um, but I, I do think that it is a lot more, via you telling me, it's a lot more serious than that. It can be a lot more complex, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Well, hey, thank you so much for You're sitting welcome. down with me again. Um, if you would like to see Alicia on concussions, uh, feel free to call um, our number. It's in all of our information, 248-486-3636. Set up a discovery session with one of the nurses, and uh, she will coordinate um, all of the services that you need. Um, and we have full teams together to help uh, you know get everything taken care of for you. So. I enjoyed having you guys watch today. We will see you guys next week.